Hi, my name is Michael Goddard. I'm a field engineer in the enablement group at Pivotal. And I'm going to walk you through a short presentation here on GPDB's PSQL client. This is a short session, uh, just a little intro, which is this uh, quick demo. Actually, the demo is probably the dominant uh, part of this presentation. Um, we'll go over how to connect to the database in the demo and in slides, and how to issue SQL commands, the use of the various uh, meta commands that are built into the PSQL client shell. Some things, actually just one thing not to do with PSQL. Um, I like to use it for most everything. And then I'll urge you to just give it a shot in the lab. So here's the demo. The first thing I'm gonna do is there is a role or a user created already um, called demo. So I'm going to show how to connect to the database by specifying the host with the dash H command, which is the host name of this sandbox VM. Then I'm gonna give it the port. Again, it's the default port uh, 5432 and uh, the dash U, the capital U demo. This demo is the username or the role I'm gonna connect as. That next demo is the name of the database that I'm gonna connect to. And then the dash capital W says that I'm going to give a password. So now I'm connected. Okay, and that's all for, for that little piece. So the next piece here is there are several environment variables that affect the way this client works. And so if we do this, export PG database equals template one, I'm actually logged in as GP admin on this VM. So I am the database admin or super user account. So now I'm gonna do PSQL and if you notice that when I log in, I get the name of the database as part of my prompt. And here I've got the prompt that indicates I'm a super user. Whereas earlier, when I was logged in as a demo uh, user, I got a different prompt. Uh, the name of the database is demo here. And then I have this arrow as opposed to the pound sign. So if I do a backslash C, which is the shorthand notation for either show me which database I'm connected to, if you don't give it an argument, or you can give it the name of the database, and you can now be connected to that database. In this case, that was demo. So now I'm going to give it the backslash Q, which means to quit. You can also just give it a control D. Okay, so we've done that. And now let's just try real quick to change the value of the environment variable and connect. And again, we are now connected to demo because we set PG database equal to demo. And I just hit control D to quit the shell, the PSQL client. So now what we're gonna do is run PSQL and then I'm going to give it this combination of command line options which is basically the dash C says to execute the command that's given in quotes here that's a SQL command and the TA as I recall uh, says don't give it the T says do not print out the headers for the columns, and then the A says, I believe, to shrink any white space and just remove it. And so this will by default be pipe delimited output. So in certain cases, if you're scripting something, you may want to run a command like this and then pipe that output into some programming language. Um, to do something you know in your program if you're doing some kind of maintenance on the database so in this case the only host we have is the sandbox hosts name so 
it is gpdb-sandbox.localdomain. This is one that you might find handy. Um, you can do something like this. You echo a command, show all in this case, and then I'm piping it to the psql client and then I'm piping the output of that through grep minus i, so it's case insensitive, and I'm going to grep on mem because I guess that any guck, uh, which is also called, uh, it's, it's a short name for a command or configuration parameter. I think it stands for grand unified configuration or something. But I'm looking for any gucks that uh, are related to memory. So let's see if this works. So now I've found that you know we have several gucks here. Um, I'm sure we'll talk about that in some other slide decks. Um, we've got max statement mem, statement mem, which I'm sure we'll talk about as well. Um, so that there are quite a few gucks related to memory. Okay, in the next part here, I'm just going to show you the three environment variables in addition to PG database that you may actually find handy. Um, I'm not going to go through those one by one right here. Um, in this part here, what I want to do is just go through some of these other shorthand notations. We've already gone through the backslash C. So let me get back into the database here and I'm going to do the backslash L. So what that does, it gives me a list of all the databases that are in this cluster. And you can see the demo one and template one and both of those are ones we've used. And um, let's see, we can use this one backslash DN to show us the schemas that are here. So we've got the public schema, which is where I've actually been putting my tables. Uh, we've got several others there as well. So if we do the backslash DT, this will give us a list of the tables. And we've got quite a few there. And the next one is backslash dx. So if I have any external tables, I can use this to show just those. So I do have one external table, this avro data underscore ext. Um, you can see here storage is external. Um, so a lot of the time when I'm working with the database, I like to set timing to be on. And what I did is I just toggled timing to off. But if I do timing again, it turns it on. And you can also be explicit and either do timing on or timing off like that. If I want to show the users that are the roles, I can do du. So we only have three GP admin, our DBA user, GP mon, which is used for command center. And then we've got the demo user account. Um, let's see, that's how I would change to the template one database, which I've already done. And then that's how to quit. So that is an overview of some of the kind of shorthand uh, meta commands that are available. So here, I'm going to have to quit again. And I am going to type PSQL again. And what I'm going to do is say, set some variables on the command line. So I'm going to set v1 to be an integer value. And v2 is going to be a string, which is united. OK, so once I'm in this environment now, I can actually dereference those in a query like this. So now what's happened is that v1 here has taken on this value 
and V2 is taken on the value of United. So what that enabled us to do is this, this allowed us to pick up this southwest line, and then the United actually appears in these three different airline names. And the way this query is written, we're looking for where airline name matches a regular expression that's case insensitive, which is just that name, just a string. Finally, this, this can be convenient sometimes. It's, you could argue it's maybe not too good for security, but if I wanted to set up uh, some user accounts uh, so that the users didn't have to actually give their passwords, I can use this file, which is in the user's home directory, called pgpass. And the format of the entries there is the host name, the port, the name of the database, the username and the password. So if I put this line here into that file in some user's home directory, and then I made it so that it's uh, only read-write for that user, uh, I'd be able to just, those users could just type PSQL and they'd be automatically logged in. And that can be useful sometimes if you don't want people to have to worry about their passwords or which host they're logging into by default. Um, so actually you'd have to combine that in this case with um, these other environment variables for that to all be automatic. So great. So that concludes our demo. Okay with PSQL you connect to the Greenplum master uh, PSQL is just a CLI tool that uh, runs uh, natively in your environment. In the demo, I was running it on a uh, CentOS Linux uh, installation, uh, the Sandbox VM. And it's basically uh, the same as the PSQL command that you would use if you're using Postgres. So you connect to the master in the diagram there. That's you, your client, connecting to the master. And you can specify how to connect to that master you can through various uh, settings that are command line switches. And one of them is dash D, and then you give it the name of the database, or you can set the environment variable, like I showed in the demo. And, and you also have the dash H for host name, dash P for port, and the dash capital U for your user or role name that you're going to connect to. And then optionally, you might have to specify the dash capital W that tells the client that you're going to provide a password when you log in. So um, the template one database is typically a default that, that you can initially connect to. And from there, you can create other databases. And that would be typically if you're the GP admin DBA user. So there are a couple of different ways to issue SQL commands using PSQL. Uh, three different ways shown here. One is you log in in interactive mode using PSQL and whatever combination of command line switches or environment variables you need to actually get in. Uh, another way is, again, using that same combination of you know, your credentials and so on. As required, um, here, we aren't giving any on the command line. We're just logging in using PSQL, probably because in this instance, we are the GP admin user. So in the second instance here, PSQL my database hyphen AC select star from foo. So it just runs your SQL and prints the results to the terminal. Finally, in the, in the third example, uh, PSQL my database and then you give it, rather than the C, you give it the lowercase f, and that says that the next argument is a path to the file that contains the SQL statement that you want to uh, execute. So this is more of a detailed chart showing all those various uh, scenarios. Um, in, in instance number one, the uh, lowercase a just tells it to echo all the SQL commands. And the hyphen D is uh, optional. 
I usually don't use it, but it, you can use it if you want to precede the database name uh, to make that more explicit. Then in the second example, the hyphen D was not used. They're still connecting to the FAA database. And in example two, there is a notation there that the commands should be colon separated. So if you had multiple commands, you would need to separate them with a uh, actually a semicolon. And if you just have a single one, the, sem the semicolon at the end is optional. So in the third example, um, if no database is specified, you're just using that PG database environment variable to specify that. If you don't have that set, it'll just attempt to connect to a database named as your uh, Unix login if you're connecting from a Unix system. And that's typically not what you want, except in the case of GP admin, where it is. So we've gone over most of these in the demo, except for um, the backslash question mark gives you help on the syntax and the same uh, with the backslash H gives you help on SQL commands. Um, you show tables, you can actually show system tables and system views using the backslash DT with a capital S or the backslash DV with a capital S. And the backslash DV with without the S just shows you views in your um, database. You can show roles, list the databases, connect, show the schemas, quit, and show the external tables, and then set the timing on or off just like we went over in the demo. There is some uh, configurability. You can do some customization. I've just shown a couple of files that I had set up in the GP admins home directory. In the top one, the .psqlrc is where you can put settings that you want to take effect every time you start the client. So in my case, I prefer to have timing on, so I added that. Then um, the green plum version of the PSQL client is linked with a, um, uh, a library. I, don't, I can't remember if it's a read line or a different one, but you can recall your previous commands by default just using the up arrow, which is called Emacs mode. Um, but if you want to change to VI editing mode, you can just edit a file called .editrc and add that bind hyphen V to give you VI mode. So there are things you probably don't want to do with PSQL. And the one thing I actually wanted to mention here was never use it Never attempt to offload large amounts of data using this client. It buffers all the rows up in memory before it prints the first row. So it can appear to take a very long time. It can run out of memory and it's just very slow. If you're going to offload a lot of data, it's much better to use uh, writable external tables, which we'll go over in a different section. So just in review, uh, we showed how to connect to the database, to Greenplum database, issuing some SQL commands, went through the common, commonly used meta commands. I just gave you one caveat about what you shouldn't do. And then I'd like to urge you to go and try, try all this out by uh, running through the lab. Thanks a lot.